So I've got one question for you guys. What is the stinking deal with fishing hooks? For real though, there are so many of them. There's so many shapes. There's so many different sizes. There's so many different numbers. It's all confusing. What the heck is up with fishing hooks? You know, when I was beginning my fishing journey, I had no clue what hook sizes were. I didn't know what hook strengths were. I didn't know what type of hooks you needed for certain types of lures and techniques. And so I have done the liberty of doing all the research, figuring all this stuff out for you guys to teach you guys all about hooks in today's video. I even went to Bass Pro Shops and I spent $113.22 on hooks. All of these hooks you're gonna see in this video, that way I can give you guys the best possible representation of, uh, of what I'm talking about in this video. And so I broke the bank in today's video. I emptied my wallet. And speaking of wallet, today's sponsor is Ridge Wallet. <laughs> This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. Now the Ridge Wallet has completely changed my pocket situation. This here was my old wallet. I had this wallet for five or six years, got quite a lot of wear and tear. And the problem I have with this wallet is that uh, every time I put it in my pocket, whether my back pocket or even my front pocket, it would be so thick because I would have seven to eight to 10 cards in here. I would have cash, I would have business cards. This thing would be a big old fat wad and I'm sure plenty of you guys have a wallet situation like that. And it's just uncomfortable to have to carry a wallet like that around in your pocket, have to take it out all the time to sit down, to drive in your car. Well, you know what? The Ridge Wallet stinking fixes that. I feel like people are still using uh, wallets that were designed in the 90s when uh, we've moved on from the rest of our technologies in our pockets, our phones, our keys, all that stuff is now made in the 21st century. We're not using flip phones anymore. We are using high quality smartphones and that is the same thing with wallets. And so I'm gonna show you guys kind of what makes this wallet so special and why in just the four days that I've been using this thing, I absolutely love it. The Ridge Wallet holds up to 12 cards, 12 full-size cards here on the inside of the wallet as well as room for cash on the outside. And for size comparison here, this has how many cards? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine cards and cash. This has nothing in it right here. And so if you compare the two, they are literally the same size. If you were to add all this into this wallet, it would look like that old big piece of hunk. There's over 30 styles and colors, including carbon fiber and forged metal. I got the carbon fiber one here because I'm cool like that. But don't listen to me, listen to their countless reviews. Actually, 3,000 five-star reviews to count them up. The wallet is super durable, it's gonna last you a long time. It comes with a lifetime stinking warranty, as well as a 45 day money back guarantee. So if you are not happy with your purchase, you can send it back for a full refund, but I have a feeling you're not gonna to wanna to do that. So if y'all are ready to get this big old hunk of leather out of your pocket and upgrade to a Ridge wallet, you guys can use code TRF for 10% off your first purchase. And of course, enter using that link down below in the description. Thank you so much to Ridge for sponsoring this video. And uh, let's hop into the content. So in this bag right here is kind of the reason why I needed to do that sponsorship is because I needed to make back some of the $113 that I spent on this video, on these hooks. Uh, but I wanna show you guys throughout the rest of this video the difference between the different styles of hooks. Uh, of course, showing you guys how to rig them in your favorite soft plastics, your favorite top waters, in your favorite crankbaits. And of course, go over the most confusing thing, which is the numeric system of how hook companies rank You know the sizes of hooks, whether it's size 10, 2 aught, circle hook, octopus, drop shot, wide gap, super line. There are so many terms out there and I want to take this video to explain what all of those mean. But I don't feel like doing it here on the boat is going to give you guys the best view. So we're going to head to a different scene right now where I'm going to show you guys in detail every single one of these hooks. Let's jump over there. All right, so we have made it back to my house, and the goal of this next part of the video is to show you guys in as much detail, but also as, uh, as little time possible, the difference between all these different types of hooks. So here I've got my terminal tackle box, and I've got every single type of hook you could probably ever desire in a bass fishing scenario. I'm going to break it down into the top three or four categories. We're going to go over the sizes, how to rig them on soft plastics, and show you, of course, size for comparison to make sure when you guys make your next tackle order, you are buying the right size. So the first hook category we're going to talk about today is going to be the worm hook. 
The worm hook is definitely one of the most widely used hooks in the bass fishing world, and so I've made a chart for both worm hooks, circle hooks, and treble hooks, but we're gonna focus on worm hooks for right now. So if you guys have ever fished a worm, you probably fished a worm hook or you have desired a hook that fits a worm very well. And so by worms, I mean anything that is larger than your average little drop shot lure. So anything I'd say four inches and longer, I'm talking a big worm, I'm talking a Cinco, I'm talking a creature style bait, a craw, anything that really fits the, like, the larger soft plastic category, that is going to be what a worm hook is for. And so let me get this centered here real quick and in focus. Hopefully you guys can see this. Um, but when I'm going to talk about each of the hook categories, I'm going to talk about, of course, their sizes, their types, and give you guys some comparison. So I'm going to stick on this page right here a penny. Everybody's got a penny. Everybody knows what a penny looks like. We're going to stick a penny right there for comparison to all these hook sizes. And so I'm going to stick some hooks on the board right now. So to start with worm hooks, we have the size. So the size in worm hooks is measured in what is called aughts. It's like the word you ought to do something, but it's it's just an, the letter O or a zero. I don't even know exactly what it is, but it is a, a, a number over, as in the fraction here, like a one over that, that O. It's a one ought. It's a two ought, a three ought. And it goes and ranges in size just like numbers would. One ought is the smallest, two ought, three ought, four ought, five ought. It can get even bigger than five ought, and of course it can get smaller than one ought. Uh, I'm going to go over in this video what I think is most used across the bass fishing spectrum. And so you're going to find probably times in your fishing life, if you do other things besides bass fishing, that you like to use hooks smaller than one ought or smaller than, you know, the treble hooks or circle hooks that I'm going to talk about. But I'm just talking about the ones that I use on a frequent basis. And some of these are so off the wall that I don't even use them all the time. So these right here are the ones that I am mostly using in a bass fishing scenario. Uh, otherwise, I just don't really think it's necessary. Um, but like I said, they are measured in aughts, with one aught, of course, being used mostly for your super small soft plastics. You know, two aught, which I don't have, it, but it fits in between those two. Uh, three aught is more for your, you know, small uh, creature baits, small worms. Four aught and five aught are the most commonly used, especially four aught is the most commonly used soft plastic hook. And uh, anything bigger than five aught, I mean, you can use it for giant worms and such, but you don't really need a whole lot of those in your tackle arsenal. I found that you can even throw a big worm on a four or a five aught and you'll still get a pretty good hookup ratio. Now the type of hooks down here range from wide gap to EWG or extra wide gap, offset round bend, straight shank, and then a thing called super line. You may wonder what the heck is super line. So let's talk about all those real quick. A wide gap hook is a hook where the gap of the hook from the hook point to whatever this, this bend in the hook is here is relatively wide compared to other hooks. So this hook here is technically a wide gap hook. Now an EWG, an extra wide gap, is a wider gap than your normal gap. So let's take this one aught here as an example of an extra wide gap, even though it's not. I'm just saying this is going to be an extra wide gap. This here is a hook that Berkeley makes. It is their uh, size one, which is actually smaller on the spectrum than one aught. And you can tell by looking at the two here that this one here on the left definitely has a bigger uh, wide gap than this one does, just by a little bit. And of course, the wider the gap, the more uh, vertical distance you have between the hook point and the bend of the hook, the, the larger a soft plastic you can accommodate. And so that's what an extra wide gap is. I don't use them a whole lot, but like I said, they're not really that much different than a regular wide gap hook. But that's just kind of a, a small little difference you guys might be able to notice. So that there is a wide gap hook. The next one on the list is going to be an offset round bend. Now I've met a lot of pro anglers that like to use this hook right here. This is called an offset round bend. And it is very similar to uh, a wide gap hook, except that there's no bend in the hook that's down here. Even though it says round bend, I'm not exactly sure what the naming means. But this here goes straight from the bend of the hook or the, uh, the notch, whatever this is called up here, straight down a straight line and around up to the hook point. And this hook here, in my experience, uh, has a lot more niche opportunities. I really only use it for the super thin soft plastics. So your lizards, your very, very thin finesse worms, anything where you don't have to have a whole lot of clearance uh, so the hook can poke through and you can set the hook, that's where you use the offset round bend. I've just found that you don't get as good of a hookup ratio and you don't really get any more bites. Uh, you'd think with a, a less, you know, big of a bend, the fish might feel, uh, you know, 
a lot more confident in, in eating that lure than it would a wide gap. I really haven't found that to be the case. You can feel free to disagree with me in the comment section, but I found that the offset round bend uh, is not really a hook that I use all that often. So for that reason, we're taking that one out. The next hook is going to be called a straight shank, and I have two examples here of a straight shank. It usually refers to a flippin' hook. Now, they also make several straight shanks that are not um, as thick of a wire hook, but these here are straight shanks. So, but this is the straight shank hook, oftentimes known as the flipping hook. It is a thicker wire hook, and it oftentimes has a keeper here. So on, on the, the wide gap hooks, the keeper is just kind of a, a little bend in the hook beneath the eye where the soft plastic sits. With the uh, straight shank, it's usually an, an actual uh, plastic or, or epoxy or some kind of silicone piece that sits up here on the top of the hook, depending on which brand you get, and that helps keep the bait on there. Uh, straight shank, I usually only use when I'm flipping because uh, it's just a thicker hook. I don't usually need to use a hook of that thickness to get fish out of uh, from underneath, you know, a very simple dock or just on a, on a, on a grass line. I'm not usually throwing a, a straight shank hook, but they do have their purpose and that is for heavy, heavy cover. So now what is a super line hook? Super line is this hook right here. This three out hook, let me move these out of the way. This three out hook is what's called a super line. And you may ask Tyler, what the heck makes it super line? Well, the reason why it's called super line is because it is made for a thicker line size. So the hook itself is a thicker diameter. It takes more strength to bend the hook out than this hook does. This hook here is not super line. You can immediately tell the difference, even though it's only two sizes, one out and three out, two size difference. You can tell that this one here will take a lot less pressure to bend out than this one would. I don't really focus on when I'm buying hooks, whether it's a super line or not. Um, it doesn't really matter to me. I haven't found a whole lot of a difference between the super line and the regular, uh, unless of course you get down to the super small sizes. Uh, I don't think most fish can tell. I guess if I had a preference, I'd probably throw just the normal hook, not the super line, but this can be used as sort of a flipping hook in case you're in a pinch and you don't have any straight shank flipping hooks around. You can use a super line hook. And so that's what super line means. It just means it's like a, it's a super line. Now, if you're curious which baits I would throw with these certain uh, worms, I will have them linked below, but just for the sake of keeping this video, you know, decently short, I'm not going to pull out a whole lot of soft plastics to show you guys, but, you know, flipping baits, of course, your more craw, bluegill style imitation soft plastics, your rodent, uh, your structure bug, uh, maybe even like a six or seven inch ocho, a cinco, um, and then these smaller baits are, of course, for your, your tiny little worms, your finesse worms, uh, and then any hook in the middle, the four out, five out, that's just used for your standard uh, curly tail worms, cincos, anything like that. Uh, it just really depends, you know, what type of cover you're fishing and what size your lure, and that mean that that helps pick what type of hook you need. And so, if if you have any questions about that, drop it in the comment section below. This is not meant to be confusing. I hope it's not. Uh, and I have a video as well that I made on how to rig every single soft plastic. And in that video, I go over these styles of hooks and actually show you how to rig them with the soft plastics that are needed. So I will have that linked up here in the corner. So with that said, worm hooks are done. Let's move on to circle hooks. Bam, circle hooks, let's talk about them. Let's get our penny here for reference. This penny will actually be more useful in the, uh, the circle hooks uh, for reference. But of course, feel free to screenshot any of this on your phone or your computer. That way when you guys are going to shop for tackle or when you're out on the water and you're trying to decide which one to use, you guys can have a little bit of a reference here. Uh, so when it comes to circle hooks, that term is, in my experience, much more broad than the worm hook category. So the reason why I'm calling it circle is because these hooks more resemble a circular shape than your, your average uh, fishing hooks would. And so, uh, you know, this category contains most of the bass hooks that throw, that people throw for finesse techniques, such as drop shots, wacky rigs. Uh, you know, circle is just the, the word that's used to describe the group, even though it contains uh, many of the types that we're gonna talk about down here. And so the, the sizes for circle hooks go as such. And let me put some hooks in here to show you guys. So sizes when it comes to circle hooks are measured a little bit differently than worm hooks are. Sizes are measured in numbers and aughts. So we're going to start with the smallest uh, circle slash drop shot. These are actually drop shot specific. This is the Berkeley Fusion hook here. I just picked this brand because it had the most Bass Pro Shops in stock and they were all the right size comparison. So this is a size six drop shot hook, as you can tell, compared to a penny right there. It's pretty dang small. And that's about the smallest I will ever go in both size and thinness of the diameter of the hook. It's a pretty small hook. I honestly probably wouldn't even use the six that often. I just bought it to show you guys. And of course, you can go even smaller. They sold one that was down to a size 10. 
and that's just too dang small. For bass fishing, that is not of any use to you. And so sizes, just like, uh, or I guess, I guess in worm hooks, they jump by the one, so it's one-aught, two-aught, three-aught. In circle hooks, they jump by the twos. Now you can find brands that make them in between, but it's mostly size six, size four, size two. You can find some size ones, but I could not find one. Then you have one-aught, two-aught, three-aught, and they count up in terms of ones. So in the numbers, they count up from the, a larger number to a smaller, it's almost like, it's almost like the, I forgot the, the system is called in, in school with numbers, but it's like the negative system goes, the farther away from the, the, the center line from zero you get, it gets bigger as you go to the left and it gets bigger as you go to the right. That's the same way with numbers on hooks and aughts. I don't know why they did this, it's very confusing, but I'm finally glad that I figured it out and I can help you guys as well. So it is two, four, six, eight, ten gets smaller the way you go that way, and then one out, two out, three out, four out, five out, the bigger you go that way. Now, there's a, a lot of, uh, I wouldn't say controversy, but there's just a lot of different sizings that companies have when they have uh, hook sizes when it comes to circle. So you're gonna find times when a circle hook is going to be different than a drop shot hook in terms of its size. So let's go to types down here. With types, we have drop shot, we have octopus, wacky, Nico, and other specialty hooks. So we're gonna start with drop shot. Drop shot is really what this whole category is about. It is the, the main hook that every finesse fisherman uses uh, when they throw a drop shot. Now, of course, I do throw a one aught Texas rig as well, that super light one that y'all saw in this corner uh, a few minutes ago in the video. I throw that for drop shots too, but if I'm throwing a nose hooked bait, it's going to be these hooks right here, usually size four, size two, or size one aught. And they're just, they're, they're a great bait to be able to nose hook a plastic. So you take the hook here and you just kind of hook it through the nose of the tiny little worm or, uh, or shad imitation bait and you kind of dangle it through the water. And that's what these hooks are mostly used for. Now, octopus hooks are usually a little more circular in shape. So you can tell these are kind of teardrop shaped. Octopus are usually more circular shaped. And one of the hooks that fits into the octopus segment is going to be the wacky hook. As you can tell, this hook right here is more circular shaped, and this one is actually a weedless wacky hook, so it comes with a little plastic weed guard that you bend down to the, uh, the barb of the hook, and that really allows you a lot of weedlessness when you're throwing a wacky rig. Now, there's one thing I noticed when I was shopping for hooks, and it is that a lot of companies, especially you, Gamagatsu, you will claim that your hook is a wacky hook, even though it has no application really within the bass fishing, at least in my experience, the bass fishing scene. And so I'm gonna show you guys a video right here, as you'll see on the screen, that this hook says it is for, it's called a wicked wacky hook, I think. And it says it's for wacky hooks, but it is a size three aught, and there's no way any size wacky, wacky worm that you're gonna throw on there is gonna fit that hook. There's just no way. And so when you're shopping at the stores, a lot of these times these brands, you know, they'll have tons of packages. The packages will all look the same and they'll just keep making sizes and putting a number on there because they think people will buy them and a bunch of people probably will. And so I'm just telling you, if it looks too big or too small to be useful, it probably is and you're best taking a more, uh, you know, measured approach and, and a more safe approach when selecting your hook. So this here is my wacky hook. I use this one most of the time when I'm throwing a wacky rig and that is about the size one aught or two aught. You know, when it comes to three aught, four aught wacky, well, you can throw that. But like I said, what's the need? You, you don't need that much clearance in a wacky worm. I don't like to have so much, so much, so much hook on one side of the bait and the other. I like it to fit the worm just fine. And for a five inch Ocho, this fits just perfectly. Now, Nico is a different style of hook and it is usually an open hook like this. This here is a Nico hook and it is meant for a wacky rig where one of the tail ends is weighted with a nail. So it's mostly thrown offshore, a little bit deeper than your classic wacky rig is. And this one here has a longer straight shank. Don't ask me why, that's just what the companies that make Nico hooks decided. And um, yeah, that's, that's a Nico hook. So this here is actually a size one but as you can tell, a size one of VMC, which is this brand right here, it says size one, that fits in with the one aught or even two aught of the Berkeley. So there's, there's a whole lot of variations within hooks. Don't buy it just because the, the, the box has a certain size. Make sure you're actually going around and if you can, physically look and see what the package looks like and what the uh, size of the hook is and compare it with the worm in your hand as well. If you can, go to Bass Pro Shops or whatever. Uh, and compare the two to make sure they actually fit. 
And some other specialty ones are, of course, some weighted wacky hooks. So these here are two different weighted wacky. They both fit with, like I said, within the one-aught or two-aught category, and they just have a weed guard and a weight on them as well to help the wacky rig get deeper, and that can be used kind of in place of a Nika rig or, or just like a Nika rig is. So that is circle hooks. You know, there's, 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 like I said, drop shot, octopus, circle, and there's tons of other ones that I haven't mentioned. There's live bait hooks. There are salmon hooks. Circle is a huge category, but this is most of the time when I'm talking about bass hooks, it is these five sizes right here, and uh, that's about it. Wham, bam, slam. We are down to our final hook, and that is the treble hook. Now, there's only three sizes that I'm actually going to talk about, and that is because those are the three most used in bass fishing, and that is the size two the size four, and the size six. So just like the circle hooks, these are measured in the negative degree in terms of from, from zero. So you're gonna have, the farther away you get from that zero line, uh, you're gonna get smaller. So size two is this big one here, size four is the middle, and size six is smaller. You can get even smaller, and you can get even bigger. I'm pretty sure they go into the aughts, just like circle hooks in, in wide gap and worm hooks do. But for most part in bass fishing, all you need is these three trebles right here. Uh, and so basically what makes a treble hook a treble hook is treble is three. Treble has three different hook points with three different barbs. Of course, it makes them a little more lethal to uh, get inside your hands. So be, make sure you're being careful when you're handling baits that have treble hooks. But they are one of the most effective hooks, especially for catching numbers of bass, especially very, very fast on hard baits such as crankbaits and topwaters. And uh, they are connected between the eye, where they get connected to the bait, the shank, which is no, not, not a prison weapon, it is a, uh, a, the, the segment of, of metal where the three hooks combine, and then where they flower out, per se, here at the end into the three separate hook points. And so I'm going to kind of pull up three different crankbaits, or hard baits, to show you guys which sizes are usually used. So for your smaller crankbaits, you know, the ones that dive, you know, one foot to, uh, to kind of four foot, and I'm talking about your smaller body crankbaits, like this little tiny quarter ounce red eye shad that uses size six hooks this here regular size red eye shad uses size four and this here kvd sexy dog walking top water uses size two so this here size two is going to be used for your larger style hard baits your deep crank baits 8xd 6xds and your big walking baits this middle one is really your all-purpose versatile hook it is your ripless crankbait, your rattle trap, your square bill. That is usually a size four. In size six is going to be your tiny crankbaits, like this little quarter ounce red eye shad, your little rock crawlers. Uh, sometimes jerk baits have a size six on them. Really anything smaller bodied doesn't always mean smaller fish. It just means a smaller lure requires a size six hook. So I'm going to kind of take away these baits here and talk about why you should pay attention to what size hooks you have on your lures. Now, of course, if you're buying striking lures, they come with great hooks that are already pre-sized you know, sized to fit the lures well. But let's say that you have an old, old crankbait and you want to replace the hooks with, uh, like, I, I love using the, uh, the owner Stinger trebles here. Owner makes good ones. Mustad, uh, Gamagatsu. There's so many good treble hook. Really, so many good brands out there. I just prefer Owner's, um, at least right now in my in my life for uh, for treble hooks replacement. And so you want to make sure that when you are looking at the two, I'll kind of take it over here to the side for you guys. When you're looking at the two treble hooks and where they're connected, you want to move them close to each other like this and make sure that they can't hook each other. Because if that's the case, you're using too big of a treble hook, or you're using what's called the, sh the or what's called the shank is too long. So the shank, like I mentioned, between where the eye finishes and where the hooks blossom out, flower out, that is called the shank. And there's a difference between short shank and long shank. So a lot of the hooks you find um, that are EWGs, as we'll talk about, they have a shorter shank. So the the distance between here is actually shorter. So if you were to hang your crankbait down, you'd have less distance in between the hook points and the bottom of your crankbait. That can be really useful sometimes in case those fish are really choking it. Uh, it really hooks those fish better. But I just prefer a nice, normal shank hook uh, that's not too long, not too short. And so that brings me to what round bend versus EWGR. Now, we talked about both of those terms in the worm hook segment of the video. But when it comes to treble hooks, let me pull up two different hooks of the same size, a wide gap, an extra wide gap hook, and a round bend. So these two hooks here are both size two treble hooks, 
but they are different in terms of their uh, their total hook shape, as you can probably see right here. I'll move the paper over a little bit so you guys can see this. One of them is an extra wide gap, and one of them is round bend. I'll let you guys guess here for a second. A little door of the Explorer type moment. And you probably guessed right. This one on the left here is an extra wide gap. And that, as you can probably guess, is, is pretty easy because the gap is extra wide. I'll try to hold these two baits side, these two treble hooks side by side. As you can tell, one hook, the point shoots straight up into the sky, the right one, the round bend. And this hook here, the hook point points a little bit in towards the center of the hook itself. And so what are these two hooks used for? Extra wide gap versus round bend. Well, extra wide gap oftentimes has a much better landing ratio, but a less good hookup ratio than this one does. So let's say a fish is kind of slapping at your jerk.